I mean, for, for me, the biggest issue is always like, I feel like, my game sense. Mm. That is my top one biggest issue, that I don't know how to approach situations, that I don't know how to... when to retreat, when and how to use cover, how to fight yeah. one versus threes, or how to handle multiple teams, how to yeah, keep track of who did damage to who, and all that kind of <laughs> things. For sure. Well, especially since a lot of it is subconscious, right? Awareness is not something you're often actively thinking about, and that makes yeah. it very hard to practice. For sure, that is the most common thing. Um, I do always try to teach people some basic rules, like learn to count the amount of enemies you need. If you've only seen two and you're missing one, you should be looking at your flanks, for example. Um, but that's something that I might just be looking at someone playing that I'm coaching. And as they're going into a fight, I'll just ask them questions. I won't tell them what to do. I'm just like, how many did you see? Well, what do you think the others are doing? What do you think you should do? And just by making them think about it, that's usually enough. I headshot him. Nice. He's holding my door. Solid. I do find with awareness, if I am really trying to practice it um the talking out loud exercise is oh, he's running. probably the most valuable yeah I, I often do that after a gunfight like that can also help trying yeah. to analyze what i did wrong yeah so um doing it after the gunfight is really nice for your decision making because you can go through the choices you make and kind of try to figure out was the problem the choice i made or how i executed that choice right um He's cracked. He is actually quite low. Poor guy. Ooh. Ooh. I had to push up the close to the building. You're alright, that quite that guy's quite far. Oh another one looking at us. Oh no. Third. Huh. I'm hella low. I'm getting chased. Yep, I'm here. Nice. I think that guy might still be the solo from earlier, but I'm not sure. Oh, he's cracked again. Nice. Uh, but yeah, what we were talking about before we were rudely interrupted by these people. <laughs> is um, the decision making is a lot, a lot easier to practice because it's it's easier to pinpoint when you made a mistake, and when it comes to execution, that's. A little harder, but like missing your shots is easy to see or messing oh, with yeah. movement, pretty easy. But when it comes to missing information, that's extremely difficult. That's very subjective or like you don't know things you don't know. Yeah. So I find starting with just making people talk out loud for about an hour when they play and just call out every piece of information. The, the only rule I give them is don't stop talking. Okay. You have to be talking. No downtime. So that you're always saying all the information. And the only point of that is just that you're forcing it out of your subconscious and mm. into your active thinking that you're really, really not just seeing it, but also doing something with the information. That actually sounds like a pretty good exercise. It is very valuable. Yeah. And um, I still find myself doing it sometimes. Helmet you want that helmet? Level four. I sure. think it's more useful on you. Uh, I mean, your queue is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, but it's also super fast. That is true. Oh, I've been enjoying it so much. Um, I was wondering, I wasn't even sure, are you like... What is your connection to uh, Apex University? Are you like just a coach there? Sort of a founding um, member? How does it go? Sort of. So the subreddit was created way before by just a guy that wanted to make a place where people could ask questions. Mm -hmm. And I was still uh, coaching Overwatch at the time. So just in my free time, I really enjoyed answering questions there. And after a while, when the sub was still only like a couple hundred people, um, I started uploading videos of VOD reviews and it just suddenly popped off. Like thousands of people started watching okay. and joining. So I just became that coach from there. I didn't make it though. Oh, oh one's right here though. Oh. Okay, I'm okay. Nice. 
a wraith with purple below. Yep. Crack. <laughs> I do really like this. Oh yeah, like it together with the tridents makes for some really intriguing gun gameplay. Absolutely. I also am very impressed by the implementation of the trident. It's oh yeah, it, it seems it. so well play tested and thought out. Yes, yes, which is just wonderful. It is very rarely that something so game-changing suddenly gets added and it feels so natural. Yeah, totally. Leave me alone! <laughs> nice. I'm in the tunnels and I don't know where I am. Uh, oh. you're about to be... Yeah, Hello. There you are. <laughs> One more squad. Oh, what? Wow. But we didn't even hear them, so they must be kind of far. Oh, there they are. Oh yeah, one's in there. He's dead. Perfect. Poor, poor gent. That should just be a uh, bangla. Uh, she's very confused. Yep. I'm burning her. Oh, this poor girl. Oh, she's not a bangla. She's not right. Crack. <laughs> GG. Do you think Horizon is going to be used competitively? That's a good question. Let's also ask that Dan. Probably not. Yeah, I also don't think so. Um, as fun as her queue is, when it comes to competitive, it generally really comes down to team value and rotation value. And she has some micro team value, but nothing that really outclasses any of the meta legends right now. Yeah. She also doesn't counter anything that's important. And she also doesn't make rotations easier. She also doesn't have a way to rotate herself safely or anything that makes her a really crazy close range fighter yeah. either. So. Yeah, all of those, probably not. She probably fits into the same category as Octane, just a fun yeah. legend to play in pubs and not the need to be competitively viable. Like if, yeah, you, exactly. if you compare it like, who would you rather have, Horizon or Bloodhound in a competitive match? But if everybody in the lobby is good at mechanics and cover usage, then the value of wall hacks becomes infinitely higher than it is in pubs. So, that's extremely valuable, mm. especially if you're limited on space. Like, in pro play, space is one of the most limited resources that you're fighting for. I think it's really interesting that Crypto, for example, had such a rise in comp. Like Actually, in the last time I was uh, coaching competitive teams was in Season 3. Mm -hmm. uh, I was coaching one team in the Asian region, uh, region at the moment. And during Season 3, nobody in the UNNA played him, and he was super meta there. Okay. It was really interesting to see how splitting the regions created entirely different metas between Asia and then Europe and uh, North America. <clears throat> so Crypto has been meta for two more seasons there. Same for Rev turned meta. Yeah, away that, that's the next I was going to say. Revenant, <laughs> I hear, is in Japan, for example, ultra meta. Yep. yep. The outside team is a duo, inside is a solo. Come loot. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Just the Pathfinder then. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. Just always stand on top. They will yeah. never see you. They never check it. It's perfect. I'm okay. I got Loba. Nice. I got a gun. Are they on you? Yeah, Horizon on me. She's back, she's low. Nice. You're unstoppable today. But only since I started playing with you. <laughs> for some reason. Well, I, I don't know what I did, but I'm happy it worked <laughs> <laughs> But I'm now at the six and a half hour mark for streaming. And I'm slowly feeling like my aim is warming up. But I also feel like it's... Even if I just play an hour a day, just the daily Apex exposure just makes such a big difference. Like an hour a day is so much better than playing five hours every five days, feels like. Yeah, there's a, there's an important reason why in the first episode of the um, coaching series I'm doing, I put in giant letters on stream daily practice. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Daily, always daily. It's better to play one hour daily than 20 hours every weekend. Especially if you think about just how learning works. 
if you prevent your mechanics from getting rusty by playing more than 30 minutes every day, that's your mechanics covered. And then the, the actual learning, the brain aspect, you process everything when you sleep. And if you don't do anything the next day, well, you're just dumping it in your long-term memory and not using the brain power for today to add more, right? And to reinforce things. Mm. Yeah, I think when it comes to you made those anything, points pretty clear in your coaching vid videos, right? Yeah. Cracked. Of course, another team. Yep, I'm on the roof. One shot on the raid. Nice. Holy hell. Yeah, stop them. I have no idea how that just happened. I am getting pretty tired, but. I feel my aim <laughs> getting consistent. <laughs> I know that feeling. I also feel that um, aim training consistently does really help, but if I don't have teammates, I'm just like, ah, I'll just keep aim training. But then after after a short session, you kind of have diminishing returns. There's not really a point. I have never actually aim trained. It's um, the second upcoming topic on the, the series, Ooh. episode number four. We'll be talking about aim training because there's so many misconceptions and ways to waste time, but when done decently, it's actually extremely helpful. Mm.